I did a video last month talking about Octopus Go Intelligent, people cheating it and getting emails being warned that they could be consequences if they carried on. Well, guess what? The cheaters got their way and everyone will be paying the price because they're changing the way Octopus Go Intelligent will be calculated for extra hours. Now, this has had a lot of people really confused from people on forums to people who think they've read and understood the email to YouTubers giving completely incorrect information. So get a cup of tea, sit down, and I'm going to go through some real life scenarios of what's actually going to happen with the tariff. Now, if you think you already do know, chances are you don't. So maybe stick around for this video and find out exactly what's happening. If you're interested in learning more about Octopus Energy and tariffs, I make tariff information about Octopus Energy regular with inside scoops from Octopus Energy, including interviews from all their top level brass. And I've also got a lot of Octopus Go, in, Go Intelligent technology in here, like a mix of all the chargers that are compatible with it, plus an Octopus heat pump. So click subscribe and that notification bell and you'll be notified every time there's a new video. Now, before we get into examples and scenarios of what can actually happen on the new six hour limit, well, let's say first, I'm also gonna tell you, by the way, how you can stop it from going over the six hour limit if that's one of your worries. But let's first explain why we got to this situation and what's happened. 80% of people on Octopus Go Intelligent charge well within six hours, absolutely no issue. However, 20% of you have been ruining it for the rest of us and have now resulted in a tariff uh, modification to Octopus Go Intelligent. You 20% have either un in unintentionally, which I very much doubt there's very, very few of them, but most of that 20% have intentionally been manipulating the way the tariff works to get extra Octopus Go Intelligent hours. And by manipulating it, they have cost the system money in the way it's been sort of working. So either that's downgrading the charge rate or messing around with some other tricks or using deliberately slow chargers to gain extra hours via their car. So I think the term is muck around and find out. And that's what these people have done to the rest of us. Now for 80% of you, nothing is changing. Don't worry if you're one of those 80%, pretty much nothing's going to change. If you're one of the 20%, a lot's going to be changing for you, but if you're part of a group of small group of people which are not the real 20%, but somewhere in between the 80 and 20 that have occasional charges over six hours and you're worried about that, don't worry, we'll get to it. There's a way of stopping it. Don't worry. Promise you I'm going to mention how to do that. Now, let's just quick summarize what the tariff is. It is between half 11 at night, so 5 feet in the morning, 7p. That's not changing. That's for the house. Uh, all the time, every single day, non-stop. Then you have a peak rate, which roughly about 29p at the time of publishing this video. Uh, and th again, that is from the other hours from half five in the morning till half 11 at night, you will pay that. That's also going to be referred to later in this video as the bump rate. Now, if you want to see the latest Octopus rates, go to evnick.com forward slash energy. And there's a code there where if you sign up to Octopus Energy, you will get £50 credit when you sign up. Now the car is entitled to six hours of cheap, smart charging every single 24 hour period. Now Octopus may decide to schedule that six hours in the half 11 till half five schedule, or they may decide to schedule it out of that rate. Now, whenever they schedule it, the house and the car will also get 7p and the house will always get 7p between half 11 and half five regardless every single night so just remember the thing that never changes is the house will always get 7p between half 11 and half five in the morning regardless of what the car is doing if the car is charging within its six hours allowed window you can get 7p for both. Now let's get through some actual scenarios and working how this works because it does get complicated and also some commonly asked questions that I've seen asked about this already. So scenario number one. Now scenario number one, you get home and you plug your car in at 1pm. The car immediately starts charging from 1pm till 6pm. That is now five hours of smart charging. All those five hours at the moment have all been for the house and the car at 7p, even though they were outside the usual off-peak tariff. You've still had those five hours and you're going to get 11.30 till 5.30 for the house at 7p, regardless of what is going to happen next. Now, at 11.30 till 12.30, the car charges for one 
extra hour. That's six hours in total, and every single one of those car hours will be at 7p, and the house will keep its remaining hours after half 11, uh, half 12 at night till 5 feet in the morning just for the house. Now, scenario number two, we're going to modify this a little bit. Let's say the car charge from uh, the, the car the, the car charges till 1 uh, 1 in the morning so in other words you got home at 1 it charged till 5 um, that was 5 hours and then it charged again from half 11 till half 1 now we've got now 7 hours of charging for the car which is over the agreed 6 now this is where people are going to get confused because what happens here is the 1 hour at night will be charged at peak rate for the electricity that's gone to the car. So the car will pay peak rate for that final hour between half 12 and half one, that energy that went in the car will be charged at peak. However, the house will keep its 7p off peak rate. So if you decided to put, uh, just give an easy example for summing up, the, uh, between half 12 and half one at night, uh, seven kilowatts went into the car because it only charged at something like three kilowatt rates. Um, seven kilowatts went in the car, that seven kilowatts would be at peak 29p or bump rate charge, but the house, let's say it pulled 10 kilowatts to charge your home storage batteries, those 10 kilowatts would be at 7p because the house off peak rate never changes regardless of what the car's doing. Now also remember earlier on when the car was charging during those other five hours, if you charged up your home battery between 1 p.m. and 4 p.m., that rate is still at 7p because the car was under a smart charging instruction. So it's only that extra hour at night that would have been charged for the car at the higher bump rate charge. Now, another scenario that might just kind of sum up what the other two scenarios were a little bit better because I'm going to keep it all in the usual peak rate. Scenario number three, you plug your car in at 11 a.m., and the car charges till 7 p.m. That's eight hours of charging. You will get the first six hours from 11 p.m. at 7 p for the house and the car, and the remaining two hours will be charged at the usual peak rate for both the house and the car because you've had your six hours of smart charging. Anything after six is extra. Now, at night, when it hits half 11, you will still get half 11 p.m. till 5.30 in the morning for the house only now at 7p, even though the car has already had over six hours of smart charging because the off-peak rate for the house never changes. Now, remember, these hours reset every 24 hours. Every 24 hours, you get another six hours for the car, and every day, the house will always get cheap rate. Right? Now, this is really, really important because... We've already seen an adaption to the Oxbus tariff. So if you are thinking, and I already know some of you are doing this, but if you are thinking of restricting the car to only charge between half 11 and half five in the morning, maybe you've got smart home gadgets like uh, batteries and you can't be bothered to control them during the extra hours, or maybe you just don't want to go over the six hours. If you're thinking about doing any of those things, stop and undo those things because Octopus could further restrict the Octopus Go Intelligent to people who don't allow Octopus to smart control when the charger is operating. The whole reason why it is 7Ps, Octopus get to flex the grid forward and backwards with your car charger. If you're forcing them to flex only in the half 11 to half 5 uh, bracket, you could seriously damage the tariff. You could end the tariff. So we've already seen cheats, the 20% of cheats end the tariff already. If you are likely already in a 20% group now of people who are deliberately restricting the charge late at night, that will be the next thing that Octopus change. And they'll change that by simply saying, no more house off peak electricity, it's now only for the car. We saw that in other tariffs from other companies in the past, so don't think Octopus wouldn't do it. They definitely would if it carried on being a non-incentive for them. So if you're doing that to your, your home uh, EV charger now by restricting it in those hours, stop. Now, if you're worried about going over six hours of charge, which some of you, I get, I mean, even I am, and I never go over six hours, and it occurred to me, I don't want to pay bump rate hours, you know, why? So if you are worried about it, don't worry. Octopus have told me they're going to put in the app on the actual phone. When you go to charge, it will say, 
only charge smart hours within six hours. So we have a toggle switch that you can toggle off or on. So if you only ever want six hours, just toggle on. I only ever want six hours. And that's what it will give you. If you always want a full charge, then just toggle it off. It doesn't matter if you pay the odd bump charge, but toggle it on. It will keep you within six hours. Now, there's a couple of ways to stop that happening altogether. First of all, plug in more regular. Octopus recommends every day, which is not really that that convenient for most people but plug in every day or plug in you know more regular than you do at the moment or if you don't need 100 percent charge every day when you plug in and octopus says how much charge do you need they assume that you're at zero depending on what charge you've got or what ev you, you if your ev is is not part of the api put the charge that you need if you only need an extra 40 percent put 40 percent if you have one that's integrated to the app and you only want 80% battery, just put 80%. Don't keep dragging 100% and allocating extra hours all the time if you don't need them. Now, another commonly asked question I've seen is Octopus Go Intelligent often does some weird scheduling with how your charger operates. So, for example, it might charge you from 12.10 uh, till 12.20, so 10 minutes. Will that count as a half an hour block for your charging of six hours? No, it won't. It will count for 10 minutes. So only when the car's charging, not the half an hour billing block will it count. So if it charges you for 10 minutes, it will take 10 minutes off your six hour slot. So literally it is got to be a genuine added up full six hours of charging. Now it does beg the question. I've been banging on for years about you shouldn't be using granny cables. They're too slow. They're not, uh, they're not really safe. There's uh, some efficiency stuff. There's loads of reasons why I don't like them. And loads of people keep telling me, ah, it's fine. I can use it on a go intelligent. Well, you might now want to change because six hours ain't going to be very long for charging your EV with the largest battery anymore. So maybe check out evnick.com forward slash charge for there's a link there to get money off getting an EV charger fitted and loads of reviews. Or check out this review I've just done on the Octopus Intelligent Charger that Octopus have just made themselves.